What up, Masters? Welcome back to Path to Mastery, episode number 100, my friends. As I promised, we have Gary V on this episode. This is from Agent 2021 in Miami. It's a back and forth with Gary and I discussing real estate. And we've got some massive bonuses for you. Ryan Sirhunt as well tells us his philosophy on the future of real estate. And then what I did was I took the topic that we talked about with Gary and Ryan and I brought it to all the rock stars guys at a huge real estate convention. So we have Jeannie Wallach, Jim Black, David Serpa, Vlad Katz, and Cody Gibson sharing their philosophy on what's going on and how do we guys, how do we take the business back because we unfortunately as real estate agents have been devalued by all the big websites because the consumer doesn't know any better they think they can just go to any site and they're going to get the exact same thing as if they hired a professional that said this is a fantastic conversation about disruption about what's coming to the market and how we can bring that value back as real estate agents gary and i are going to be doing a full episode coming up soon i'm working with his guy tyler on this And we're going to be having that coming soon. But I wanted to get the podcast going for you guys. So I'm using this clip. A couple disclaimers. First off, there is explicit language. So that said, if there's kids around, I would either turn it off or put some headphones on. Okay, and listen at another time. And then second, this is not the normal quality you're used to with my podcast because these interviews, besides Gary, were done on a voice recorder. So that said, the quality may not be what you're normally accustomed to, but the quantity is absolutely fantastic the content is rock rock solid so that said i hope you really enjoy this i will be back on schedule now we'll have podcasts going every week for you keep your eyes on the full interview coming soon with gary v gary vaynerchuk and listen i hope you guys really enjoy you rock enjoy Hey, what's up, Gary, man? Congrats on your success. Ryan, same thing. I'm the one who asked you the question on the field earlier yeah, today, yeah. and I'm not sure I 100% agree with your answer, but that, that doesn't really matter. You know what? Hey, you know, I, I agree with, to an extent. I think it's, it's going to hurt a lot of smaller brokerages. I think some of the bigger ones may bring a lot more value, but I'd love to hear your answer to that question on, you know, five years down the road. What are you seeing? I mean, we're being disrupted. It's not, it, it, we're being disrupted, period. Not real estate, not like the. Mm. Got it, got it. So when you talk to consumers, they feel they can go to any agent for the most part and get the same exact thing. Mm. So if I go to Gary for real estate, I go to David, I go anywhere, it's the same experience. How do we bring that value back? I think that's the biggest challenge we have is the lack of value. Well, there is a lack of value compared to other things. The value is the trust and the knowledge and the feeling. So for example, I would never go with a broker based on the years of experience in a million years. Would never ever cross my mind. Yet, a lot of people do. Other people do. So I think what's important at, is to have empathy and act that way as a person. So it's, the value is you in a 360. Some people may eliminate you because they don't like the way you said hello, literally. Other people want to know the data. Very technical, like, but you've never sold anything that was fifteen hundred dollars a square foot. I just am fascinated by people not understanding that there are thirty to seventy human variables in choosing someone, and that you should figure out what your value props are, and you should sell on offense, not defense. Too many people try to win a deal by scaring that person away from the other alternatives, and they're playing defense. I think people should go on offense and should be on full attack of what makes them good, including, I'm just like, you know who gets me every time? Hey bro, I want to do this business deal with you. I'm just a good person. When people say that to me, and if I believe them, and by the way, people say that to me because I put it out there and then I don't believe them. But like, well, actually, my relationship with him, I don't know, I've met his contemporaries, I meet a lot of people, I meet a lot of people that look like him. Just our interaction at Pencils of Promise, our breakfast, like now I already know, not much to go on, by the way, not much to go on. I just know that I like him. I don't really know what else to tell you. That's it. Literally, there's a weird chance that I may buy a very, very, very expensive townhouse on the other side from him. Not because he's on the fucking show. I've met his friends on the show. I, I just am fascinated that people think there's some move. 
there's no move. People make decisions based on people in every business, let alone a business like yours that is very deeply based on people. And if you're wearing a fucking Remax or a white card. So to that point, how are you getting out there? How are people becoming aware of you? So all the great stuff we're talking about today, if there's one thing we should be focused on, what would that be? What would you say? More truth. Truth. What's, what the fuck are you about, Dave? I'm about servicing people, man. I'm creating the greatest experience. Great. Go interview every single person you've ever serviced. Make a fucking 49 minute movie of 7,000 faces saying you were the best 13 years ago. That may work on some of them. Somebody else might like the fact that you actually, you know, these fuckers put out content all day long and then people reply and they don't answer because they think they're just going to put the content out business. But the first person that they actually reply to is like, I like that guy. Do you know the people who said that I'm a snake oil salesman and the only reason I'm successful is because daddy had a liquor store and then I reply and tell them I built my daddy's liquor store for him and left with no money at 34 and then I'm the greatest person but four minutes ago I was a dick face of the world? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know, like, there's a million things. So like, what do you put out? Your truth. I basically think you're all a comic book character. I want to know that you got bit by a spider all the way to that you have a motion picture every day of you, right? Like, yeah. got it? Yeah, man, thank you. You're welcome. So real estate, obviously disruption's coming, man. What are your thoughts on the disruption in the real estate market? The brokerages I mean, won't mean anything. Brokerage, so what do you mean by that? Brokerage you will anything. never have to work for a brokerage that has a specific office anymore. So, when so all the elements started? and everything is going to go away. Yeah. And elements are already talking about selling because they see it happening. So you're right? talking With about the compasses and everything. People are going to all, everyone's going to have home offices. So and more transactional, yeah, you're thinking? Or, yeah. Yeah. You don't need to work for another brokerage anymore. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to do in New York. It is hard, though, because yeah. people are so not used to change. But that, the brokerage model, as we see it, will be gone in, I'm like, now, honestly, are, are probably five years. Are companies doing that? Is it, is it the no, because they make way too much or? money, man. Why should the CEOs of major corporations, brokerages, be making money on our commissions? They don't, unless they're giving you the leads, mm. right? That's the biggest issue I've ever had with brokerages. It's like, why am I paying you 25, 30, 50% if I got to go and meet these people on my own, do all the work on my own, and then you just take a cut for sitting in that office? Go fuck yourself, right? So what are we doing then as agents? What should awesome. we do to offset that? I think we band together and start our own brokerage, right? Where everyone has their individual licenses. We got to figure it out legally. And that's what I'm trying to do. That's awesome, brother. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you. Thanks cool. for that. All right. So I'm here today with Jenny. Yes. yes. Jenny. Well, Jenny Wallet from Tulsa, Oklahoma. What's up, Jenny? I keep hearing you're a super rock star. So. <laughs> you, you are funny. And you've got this huge following. Is that on, what is it, YouTube or... Well, actually, I have a Facebook group okay. called Your Journey with Jenny. Okay. And actually, it was two years ago because I had a Facebook memory pop up that two years ago, I realized that I was sending out videos uh, for my database and sharing those on, on Facebook. And agents would come up to me at family reunion, and they knew me. And this light bulb moment went off where I realized that I needed to be more on purpose. Mm and focused on giving back to my agent friends across the country. So that's where I started making videos. So now I make two videos a month that go out by way of email and uh, through my Facebook group and on Facebook that um, really is just sharing tips and tricks and systems that we're using in our business and, and adding value for our agent All right, friends. So, so that said, with the value, and right now we're at Family Reunion yeah. in Anaheim, so yeah. awesome to connect. When it comes to value, like one of the challenges we're having now as an industry, and Gary's on this episode as well, Gary V, we talk about disruption. Yeah. But the, the way we can fight that is by bringing value. So when you talked about the videos, how does that connect to your value proposition? Well, I realized that when I, I started generating a lot of agent referrals, and it was from traveling to different events and meeting agents across the country, and in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I started noticing a, a trend where I was getting winning the, the competitions for Facebook referrals and it was all because we were continually giving back, saying thank you, showing gratitude and last year alone we generated to Tulsa, Oklahoma over a hundred agent referrals wow. to my team. So that allowed us to, that is now our second biggest piece of income. So essentially you're doing exactly what we're talking about is yeah. your becoming the local expert, right? Is yeah. that 
kind of like what the videos have done for you? Absolutely. So when anyone thinks of Oklahoma now, whether it's in my area or not, they think of me. And then I get to share that referral to maybe another agent around. Give us your, area. I'd love to know your, your, like, what do you see real estate 2020? What does it look like? Oh my gosh. Wow. I mean, to me, it's just all about relationships. And whenever you are the connector in your town, and for example, I just started a food video blog where I went out and interviewed the, a local restaurant owner, and that's so fun it's called Tulsa Foodie and uh, getting that launched and it's just about being in the community and and giving back to your clients to your to your database that's what awesome. it's about awesome how do our listeners get in touch with you they can uh, call me 918-706-9845 or find me on Facebook Jenny Wallach W-O-L-E-K and uh, ask to join your journey with Jenny you rock thanks Jenny thank you All right, so we're talking about Zillow now, and you know, after talking to you, it's occurred to me that Zillow is doing a better job than us real estate agents. Absolutely. I mean, if you go on Zillow and you click you want information about a home, you're going to probably have Zillow Concierge calling you, which is an inside sales team calling you right up. You know, the real estate agent is typically not calling right back, so Zillow is filling a need in the industry that the real estate agents are choosing not to fulfill on most parts. So you, you wonder why people are confused when they call a real estate agent and they get nothing, and then they go on a website, they call Zillow, and they put their email address in, and they get calls immediately. Yeah, so they, it, as far as they're concerned, Zillow is a real estate company, and Zillow's calling them back, and you know they really don't know who they're talking to, but they know somebody's giving them the information they want. That's what they're looking for. So what do we do to take that back? Because Zillow's not a real estate company. Right? What we have to do as, as industry professionals is we need, to, we need to be getting back to these people. We need to have people that are picking up the phone and calling these people back in a timely manner and, and providing them with information as to why they actually need a real estate agent because they don't know. There's no reason for them. It's just a good old-fashioned service, brother. High-level service. Yeah, that's that's what we're gonna do. Is actually earn what we get paid to do. And really give people a red carpet service, which most agents are not gonna give. You. Yeah. Well, I've said it a couple times now. I feel like it's gonna be really hard for the people in the middle to do good in this business. You know, it's gonna be either every a bunch of teams. That's my opinion. A lot of big teams, and then really high-end, like niche type. Brokers are going to do really well. There's going to be a lot of people in the middle that aren't going to be able to make money in real estate. I think that really summarizes it. It's, it's, it's going to be very difficult. Like I said, having you know people that are going to call back in a timely manner. These teams will have people that can do that. And the single agent may may actually get weeded out in the area. Yeah, I, I definitely got to get weeded out. Hi, right, brother. I'm talking to Jim Black. What's up, Jim? Tell us. I'll get up there. Get in touch with you. Again, you can uh, you can get in touch with. Us, uh, our website, viewcentralmasshomes.com. You're in Worcester. We're located right in Worcester, Massachusetts, 60 Shrewsbury Street, second floor. All right, man. Thanks for your time, Jim. What up, masses? I'm going to get you right back to the show. I want to share a couple opportunities with you. First off, my new training program I'm super pumped about. People have been asking me for years, guys. It's School for Realtors. It's an expired training. I'm giving you everything, my friends, every single thing that you're going to need to convert expired sellers in this competitive time. All right, I have every single script you're going to need. From the initial conversation, how to keep people from hanging up on you, to the closing script, right? We're giving you a copy of our pre-listing packet. I'm giving you emails that you can literally copy and paste templates. I'm giving you a 65-day email campaign guys that you literally copy and paste expired flyers okay two different marketing pieces and we're giving you actual ads that you can use on facebook guys these are targeted ads that i've been using on facebook where i'm generating people calling me and saying hey i see you guys everywhere yeah why don't you come over and take a look at my house so i'm giving you everything this is called expired school for realtors simply go to school for realtors.com Cost you $149. I wanted to make this such a no-brainer because it's going to be the best investment you will ever make in your real estate business for $149. And here's a better thing. 
there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So at the end, if you said, you know what, Dave, I just didn't get value in your expired training, then I'm going to give you your, your $149 back and you still have all my materials. So how's that work, right? You can't go wrong. Listen, everything is here, everything you need. And here's the last thing. We have a monthly call. You're part of an awesome community where everybody in the community is, has the same goals, okay? Here's you're sharing things at work with each other. And I am logging in monthly and doing a live training for everybody. You have role play partners. Listen, this is everything you need. It's so simple. You go to schoolforrealtors.com. You get to download, and then you just start downloading. And I even made it step by step by step. All right, that said, awesome opportunity for you. And then finally, and we're going to get you back to the show, I promise. If you love audiobooks or if you love podcasts, you need to check out Audible. Audible Audible.com is Amazon's audiobook site. You can get yourself a copy of Crushing It or any book you want. I would encourage Crushing It for free by going to davidsfreebook.com. Again, davidsfreebook.com. Get yourself a free copy of any audiobook you want on Audible. Yes, they're going to ask you for a credit card, but here's what you're going to do. As long as you cancel within 30 days, your credit card will never be billed. So schedule a reminder in your calendar 25 days out, and if for some reason you don't love the service, then you cancel and your card's never, ever charged, and you get to keep the book. Guys, listen, these are opportunities how, how do you go wrong with either of these opportunities? Okay, listen, you rock. Uh, I just want to share that with you. So a couple opportunities, schoolforrealtors.com and davidsfreebook.com. Enjoy the rest of the show. All right, so I'm here today with David Serpa. Yes, sir. And where are you from, David? I'm from Temecula, California. You it's have uh, a lot Southern of California. energy, my friend. Brother, I was born with a lot of energy, awesome. and I don't think that there's any reason not to have any energy. So you are an episode with Gary Vee, my friend, and so, hey, good for you. Fantastic. Listen, so talk to us about the market. You said you were with a, a discount or a... What is it like? Hey, entry only. It's the same company? thing, right? So it's, well, it's a flat fee company. Flat fee. There you, you know, go. I always tell people and about flat fee companies. If you're gonna work for a flat fee company, be ready to be paid with a flat fee because that's the future sure. of the market. And so what flat fee companies do is they'll charge just like four hundred or five hundred dollars a file uh-huh. instead of a percentage. So it's it's discount real estate. But now you've transitioned into KW full service. So why'd you make that move? And what yep. do you see going forward with the real estate market? So what I see going forward, there's a, a very good outlook for the, the real estate market. People are getting approved for money. Sure. The economy is looking good. Taxes are getting cut. And the thing is, is whenever you could look at builders building and developers developing, there's good outlook. Talk to us about the disruption. That's what I'm talking about. Which now. disruption are we talking about? We're talking about real estate is changing, right? You're talking about Zillow's. You're talking about I don't know where you're going with this. You're yes. talking about Amazon getting into real estate. Yep. What's what's your thought on that? So this is the thing. Amazon's going to try to get into real estate. Zillow thinks that they can do what they can do without us. Mm-hmm. And so what needs to happen is big companies like Keller Williams need to continue to pull the rug out from underneath the disruptors, beat them mm. at their own game, because at the end of the day, there is no path to success that does not lead through hard work. We will not be replaced by an app. If we decide to become full-time real estate agents, we will be paid like full-time real estate agents, and we will be valued like full-time real estate so agents. So in your opinion, what does that look like? How do we take the value back, right? How do we take the, the value? The consumer doesn't know the difference between Zillow and a full-time, full-time real estate agent. That's right. Well, so, the thing is Zillow and all these different companies, they're basically DIY companies. They're like, hey, get represented by an app. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, at the end of the day, how well has an app represented you with the biggest investments of your life currently? And the thing is, is people are sick of working with part-time real estate agents that are doing this for extra spending money, That's and right. for vacation money, That's right. and for all these lavish things. If you work with a team, if you work with a business, teams are going to replace the solo yeah, agent. Absolutely, absolutely, my friend. You nailed it. How do I listen again? Touch with you. Well, so I have a podcast. It's called It's About More Than Real Estate with David oh, Serpa. There you go. And I am also, uh, my book came out this week. It's called The Machine Lender's Guide to Real Estate, Perfect. Accuracy by Volume. All about how I opened seven escrows in my second month nice. in real estate, made more in that month than I did getting shot at the year prior in Afghanistan, and uh, how 100% of my team makes over $100,000 exclusively for 18 months. Good stuff, my friend. All right, awesome. Well, thanks for your time. David, I appreciate you, brother. You got it. I'm with the man, Vlad Katz. What's up, dude? Hey, David. Hello. Dude, you're on like every single panel here, so I mean, that's pretty cool. Every leadership panel, anyway. I've been blessed right. to gain a bunch of knowledge that I can now share and give back. Well, first, just talk to us about your production with your TL role. How many agents did you recruit last year? Uh, last year, we as a team recruited 228 associates, and we grew the market center by 112. We went from launch to 
400 associates in less than three years. Awesome. So why are these agents coming to you guys with everything going on in the real estate market right now? Like why are agents attracted to you and your company? Because we provide them with the tool systems and models to succeed in their businesses. Uh -huh. And when we help them succeed in their businesses, they can't help but to, to flock towards our market center. Because at the end of the day, they're business owners who want to grow their business. So, like we do. so with the changes coming to real estate, we all know this. It's no surprise, no secrets. Disruptions coming. What are your thoughts? Like, what are you seeing in 2021? What's real estate going to look like? Well, it's a great point, David, about the disruption. Disruption is actually happening on two fronts. The, the brokerage industry is getting disrupted, as well as the consumer, as, as well as the real estate industry as a whole. So, for example, you have technology in the a, in a brokerage industry that's disrupting that part, mm. but then you also have consumer facing technology that's playing a big role in where the market is heading. So where the real estate is setting, it's not even about the market anymore. Exactly. Well, ultimately, the consumers are going to decide how they make choices. That's but right. as realtors, how do we can keep our business? Because there's people trying to take us out of the business plan. That's a great question that I think not enough people are asking, David. Mm -hmm. And my answer would be is align yourself with the right who. And the right who is the company that is focusing on both the technology within the real estate brokerage industry as well as the consumer facing technology. And Kel Williams is, is the company that's talking about both. So it's, it comes down to a who because the real estate licensee 20 in three years from now will have a different role. Mm. than we do now and just like you said you know consumers are going to get a lot more power and are it, it's not just access to information it's going to be actually how they make purchasing decisions which is really i think mm. which is really cool because technology is all about helping people make great choices absolutely brother and the value we bring is giving people the best information that we can so they can use it to make the best decisions that's it because our jobs as leaders within the real estate community will not change it's to empower to coach is to consult our agents to the next levels of their success is just that the coaching consulting and access to tools is going to differ three years from now how do our listeners get in touch with you man vlad at kw.com or on facebook all right you brock brother thanks thanks hey masters i am with cody gibson what's up cody Hey, good. Uh, thanks for having me, David. Absolutely. And I would go back and listen to episode 93 because this guy has the most downloads of uh, everybody except Mel Robbins. So, hey, thanks Perfect. for doing what you do. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure to be a guest with you. Absolutely. And, and everything we've talked about on this, this special episode is about disruption, the changes coming to our market, to real uh, industry, I should say, not market. Um, what are your thoughts and like what are we doing to counter that type of disruption? You know, it's an interesting conversation, big interesting topic. There's never been a time in our industry that Wall Street has wanted into the industry more so than right now today. And I don't know that technology is going to replace real estate agents. I do think, David, that agents who are willing to use technology will replace real estate agents who won't. Mm. That I'm real clear on. And Wall Street wants in, technology wants in, because the consumer is already there. And it's almost like there's this war being waged between an old school way of doing real estate and the way consumers want to do real estate. Absolutely. And we got to catch up and we got to move on. So ultimately, the consumer is going to make the choice. I mean, they're, they're the ones who are going to drive what happens. How do we get back those consumers? How do we get back on their minds. The cool thing is that real estate is still a people business. Real estate is still a local service driven business and I don't know that there's any time soon that you're going to have an app that you just swipe right or use your thumbprint to buy a house. Mm. There's still going to be an agent involved. At the same time, at the end of the day, it is still about getting belly to belly with buyers and sellers. That hasn't changed in the 50, 60 years we've been doing this. That yeah. hasn't gone anywhere. How we get to that is entirely different. The speed at which, the rapidity at which that we can make it happen, the speed that we can deliver information and who we have to be to have a value proposition, that's what's changed dramatically. Now for us, you know, we ended last year with almost a thousand sales. We're looking at over 2,000 sales this coming year and we have to ask ourselves what tools don't we have that we've got to have to stay current. And to be honest, today, when you move into a technology space, staying current, the very comment staying current yeah. means you're already irrelevant. So when an industry is being disrupted and most agents are struggling a bit, 
why are you guys closing a thousand sales and then have a goal of two thousand sales? Well, at the end of the day, as much as we love technology, we haven't forgotten there's a heart behind every sale. We haven't forgotten there's a heart with every buyer and every seller. It is still a consumer-driven business. There's somebody buying a home because they want to be in a specific school district or out of a district or near a job or not near a job. At the end of the day, there's still families involved. And so if you realize that and you keep that front and center, the technology just makes it work faster. Yeah. So if you're just technology-based and you forget there's a heartbeat in there, you're going to have a problem with consumers. Consumers mm. still want someone who cares about them. That's a great point. And everything we talked about in the last three days has been about becoming a local expert. In- I, yeah, what's, what's old is new again. It's yeah. just new again in a different way. The way we did it in 1985 or 1995 or 2005 or 2015 doesn't even matter today. Though what we were trying to accomplish all those years is still the pinnacle of what we accomplished today. That hasn't changed. So if you're listening to the episode, as an agent, you won't be replaced as an agent. However, an agent who is smart, savvy, and willing to work hard might replace you. So one question I'm going to ask you is, well, I have a few questions. What would you say to the person listening to this right now that wants to get relevant, wants to take their business back? No matter what you do, your database is still your data bank. Your database is still where you make the most amount of money no matter what. Because I might come into your market and be able to drive internet lead generation or telemarketing or any other facet of what we might do for marketing or to find business. At the end of the day, you still have a database. So I go home and I double the size of that database and I want you to build a moat around it. And think about a moat back in the old days like castles and kingdoms and fiefdoms and kings and queens. That castle kept the bad people out. It also kept the taxpayers in. And in your business as a real estate agent, the taxpayers are your database who are buying and selling homes with you. So put the mode up to protect them from everybody else and keep them inside the walls. Love it. Become the local expert. How do I listen to get in touch with you, man? Uh, you can always uh, shoot me an email. I'm easy. I check them myself. Cody Gibson at KW.com. You can find me on Facebook. I'd uh, be happy to have a conversation. Please do uh, look me up. Awesome. And again, guys, go back, listen to episode 93, Cody Gibson on listings, listings, and more listings. Thanks, brother. You